Hi, I'm Bonnie Rogers with Planet Pets TV, and we're here with a special edition at the Pacific Marine Mammal Center in Laguna Beach. Now, I'm standing next to this blue whale jawbone. We have some giant vertebrae, a rib bone, and I asked them if I could wear some boots, so I'm really ready to get my feet wet. And can you tell us about how you originally got involved here at the Marine Mammal Center? This started many years ago when I was a kid. My dad and I were very much into the ocean. We used to go surfing together and swimming in the ocean. And uh, he was very into Jacques Cousteau. And so we were watching the shark special. And I noticed that one of their prey, the shark's prey, was these beautiful elephant seals. And I said, Dad, what is that gorgeous creature? And so he took me down the library and we looked up the elephant seals and then when I was 18 I came upon this place which was then Friends of the Sea Line which is now Pacific Marine Mammal Center and I started as a volunteer in 1996 and so I volunteered for about a year and a half, became a team leader and then a shift supervisor and I've been there ever since and I, I absolutely love it so it's my home. Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing what your job here is Perfect. at the facility. Got a lot of animals right now, so I'm glad you've got your boots on. And uh, let's. I'm let's ready. See. You ready? Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's go see what we do here. <laughs> so anyway, so we feed them herring, capelin, and sardines as well. But herring is our kind of main fish that we, we like to feed them. And then over here in the kitchen, I've got Michelle, our uh, director of operations and animal care. She is making our famous fish smoothie. Yeah. Ooh. Right here. I, it's delicious. Oh, it looks like a banana smoothie. I could have that every morning. <laughs> I know. So that that has in it is some water, and we put in some powdered uh, milk. It's called multi milk. It's specially formulated for marine mammals, and uh, we put that in there as well as some caro syrup for some dextrose, and some vitamins. And fish is the main ingredient there. How long have they been here? The average stay is about uh, three to four months, kind of depending on the severity of the problem. Uh, we have some animals that have some pretty severe injuries that will keep them for a little bit longer than that. Sea lions have got a pretty easy temperament, that's for sure. Um, they, they're pretty much, you know, if they're with one another, they're okay. They may get in the little tips here and there. Um, they're definitely not like our harbor seals who like to stay flipper length apart, don't like to be near one another. These guys are always piled on each other, so. Tasty. Now, which one of you guys? Oh, Bismarck! Bismarck does not have any flippers. Bismarck came in with no rear flippers, and we don't know if it was the congenital or what it could be. Um, so, what he's doing right now is we're running quite a few tests on him to see how he does, uh, how he would do in a natural setting out in the ocean. and. So far he's doing okay on the test. We're not too sure if he's going to be released back into the wild. What will happen if he cannot be released? What we do then is we um, contact it's all the zoos and aquariums who are looking for sea lions at this time to see if, if this would be one of the candidates that they're looking for. And Bismarck is a real special animal. He's, he definitely has a good personality. What should someone do if they find one of these animals on the beach? Don't go near it. Don't touch it because these are wild animals that could do you some pretty nasty bodily harm. Uh, call us or call, or call the National Marine Fisheries mm -hmm. and uh, they will go to us and we are part of the stranding network in California run by NOAA and uh, we are in charge of Orange County so we will take any animal off the beach we need to but that doesn't mean we always will. We may go and find that he just decided to come out and sit in the sun for a while. In which case, then the beach will be posted with signs saying that this is now a federal protected area and you're supposed, you can need to keep away from the animal. How did most of your patients here arrive? Did public citizens call in from beaches? and? Yeah, the general public, uh, lifeguards, coast guards, animal control will uh, call us up and let us know there's an animal on the beach and we'll send a crew out to go assess the situation, see if the animal's indeed either sick or injured of some sort. and. Um, then we will, and not just resting on the beach, and then we'll pick them up and bring them here, and we actually carry them in a dog kennel, just a regular dog oh. kennel, it's for transport. How do you know whether a sea lion that you've picked up has already been at the facility previously? We tag the seals on the rear flippers and the sea lions on their front flippers, so if they're ever restrand or something like that, if another facility grabs them, then um, we have our number on there, so they're able to say, we have number 14862, can you give us some history on it? Or if he comes back through our doors, we'll be able to have the records on him. Oh, look oh, at this cool. guy. Oh, yeah. That's Betsy. Oh, hi, Betsy. <laughs> Watch your nose there, buddy. 
So grab a handful of food and just throw it in that pool. Okay. Let's start going. Here we go. Now, what was wrong with these? when they initially came into the facility. Our main problem that we see here is uh, malnourishment and dehydration, which are pretty much hand in hand, because like I was telling you earlier, they get their water through their food. So if they're not eating, then they're gonna be dehydrated. We also get some entanglement issues. We have upper respiratory problems, parasite problems as well. Now I know that the kids are generally fans of marine mammals, mm -hmm. um, from my experience. Do you have any outreach programs? So it's a really unique opportunity for these kids to see this. And we always have kids come back and visit us with their families and ask how, you know, how's Skippy doing? How's John Boy doing? And so it's, it's really neat to see them keep coming back. So this is an elephant seal that came in. It's pretty late in the season for an elephant seal to come in. So we have uh, Dr. Evans here, our doc we like to call him, our medical director, who's going to be examining him with myself. Favorite. I think the elephant seals are kind of everybody's favorite. <laughs> They're mysterious. They look at you with those great big eyes. Right, and they like, have those like huge They eyes. know everything, but they're not telling you anything. Because <laughs> the sea lions are a bunch of bunch of little rowdy dogs. Right. You know, like a bunch of snippy little dogs. So they act like it. And the harbor seals are just, you know, land sharks. They just want you to put that hand down there and say, bite it off. <laughs> so what we have here is an elephant seal that just came in this morning from a local beach. A public citizen called in and saw this stranded elephant seal on the beach and they went in their crew and picked it up and here it is at the facility. He says, I'm strong. I'm not doing so bad. All I need is a little fish smoothie and I'll be on my way. Oh, I can almost reach the light. Ah, the sun. Oh, Looks like he's putting some iodine on there. there. There's no doubt about that. See the way it's circular. What a good patient. And the cookie cutter sharks do they have a mouth, a mouthful of teeth in a circular pattern. Doc, is it likely that's the cause of why this sea lion or this elephant seal is here? No, it's likely he's having problems catching food, and uh, somebody decided to take a nip out of him. He says, "Give me some of that fish smoothie." Yummy. You can track the progress of Maytag and other pinniped patients on the Pacific Marine Mammal Center website, www.pacificmmc.org. It takes a lot of TLC, and we do a lot of that here. Uh, you know, the days go to 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, seven days a week, routinely. So it seems like there's a lot of support for the facility. Do you know, how can people donate or help, and where do donations come from? Um, mostly they come from just private members of the community. Uh, we do have little fundraisers and such. They, um, the locals pretty much know us as the Big Red Barn, and they come down and, and give us donations and memberships. From the Pacific Marine Mammal Center in Laguna Beach, I'm Bonnie Rogers with Planet Pets TV, and I give this place my seal of approval.